A new age of reason Brain treason to trick the mind What good is searching If nothing's there to find We arrive at this place Of no return, my brothers Only to discover that our minds have left us away So far from the paper truth Of who we are What side is wrong, what's gone is gone What's clear and pure is not so sure All promises become a lie All that's been nine corrupt and died Come forth, bear witness See the prophet from your laws Beg for forgiveness Only after you're telling the cost We arrive at this place Of no return, my sisters Only to discover that our values Let us like gold on the show In the sea of what we could be What side is wrong, what's gone is gone Bad religion on winter shins, and it's windy. Windy, windy. Yeah, we usually don't talk about the weather, but it is windy AF. Like everything's shaking. We had some stuff um, blow off the table. It's really bad. And I, I um, uh, opened my phone to look at the Weather Channel, and it's like wind advisory, like all over the screen. It's like breaking news. Yes. So it's not that bad right now, but sometimes it just acts up, and I think our whole gazebo is going to go flying. That's why I secured it this morning. Yes. Um, but we, we are determined. It's spring. We've got to be outside. Yeah. It's it's a you know there's so much pernicious wind in the house. So much, so much huge, big, dry, airy wind. It would make Donald Trump drop dead. It's so windy. Nobody thinks about wind, right? Wittershins. Radio for your spiritual side. A twisted approach to the left hand path. But yeah, See? yeah. Donald Donald Stuff Trump is, hates wind. Or hates windmills. And we, he doesn't want anything to generate wind because look what happens. He doesn't understand and that windmills are in Holland. We have wind turbines. It's considered a pernicious influence. So he, he was onto something. I, I think he was onto some. Don Quixote was, was fighting cancer. Back in the Middle Ages, fighting those women. We thought he was crazy, but he was he was crazy like a fox. You know what I'm saying? Fox? Yeah. 
crazy? Not like the network. <laughs> <laughs> so, before our guest uh, comes on, you, you, I believe, had a news story that you want to talk about? Oh, God, okay. I was just, um, as I am wont to do, scrolling down and looking at the news, and I think I actually um, bookmarked this. Okay. I'm gonna take a deep breath and calm, calm myself. Yourself. Trump blames Obama for family separations, then praises them in the same breath. The subhead: Trump blames Obama for. Oh, okay. The subhead says exactly the same as the headline. <laughs> we really need to see it in a big font and a little font. The world does need editors. So he said. Uh, okay. So this subhead says. The president claimed that without the controversial border policies, asylum seekers would be bringing their kids to Disneyland. So Disneyland! He thinks that if he... Since, uh, I, no, I can't. I can't. I, I, don't I know crossed the Rio Grande. What are you going to do next? Do I'm going to Disneyland! Yeah, like they, they saved like 20 years worth of wages to go to Disneyland for one day. Exactly. Uh, uh, one ticket to Disneyland would probably feed their entire village back in Guatemala or wherever they're coming from. So anyway, so he's saying that Obama ordered the mandatory evacu. I mean, the man- yeah, the mandatory uh, separation, and that he came along, saw what was going on, and stopped it. That's what he's saying. That he actually stopped it. Praise Don. And so he. So this is a quote. President Obama separated the children. Those cages were, those cages that were shown, I think they were very inappropriate. They were built by President Obama's administration, not by Trump. President Obama had child separation. Take a look. The press knows it. You know it. We all know it. I'm the one that stopped it. President Obama had child separation. And then he goes on to say... The reality, okay, so this is a story. The reality, as fact checkers have emphasized, every time Trump points the finger at Obama over the controversy, uh, administrations prior to Trump separated migrant children from their families only when it was determined the child's safety was in danger. The blanket policy of separating all migrant children from the parents when they cross the border is the product of Trump and former Secretary of Homeland Security Kristen Nielsen who Trump asked to resign last weekend. In fact, sources familiar with the shakeup told NBC News that Nielsen's departure likely had to do with her resisting Trump's desire to reinstate a version of the mass child separation policy. After laying blame on Obama uh, for the controversy on Tuesday, Trump's tone suddenly shifted and he began praising the policy as the most effective method of securing the borders. Quote, Once you don't have it, that's why you see many more people coming. They're coming because it's a picnic, because let's go to Disneyland, he claimed, before instantly shifting his tone again. President Obama separated the children. They had child separation. I was the one that changed it. Lisa Schofield in the chat room says it was during the Clintons uh, that they signed an international agreement not to separate families. I hadn't heard about that one. Yeah, but, but uh, um, yeah. <laughs> so he thinks that he stopped it. Yeah. You know, we're, we're close to four years into this fucking thing, and he's still blaming Obama for everything that be, he can and taking credit for everything Obama did that he can, you know, like the, the unemployment rates and the unemployment rates amongst blacks, you know, all based on Obama-era programs. Obama's a Obama's a racist. Obama's a racist. Of course, of course. He's not a racist, though. He's dividing the country. Yes, yes, yes. It's just, for some reason, Nazis and, and clans people really, really like him. All of them. Yep. I know of no exception. I know of no Nazi or clansman or woman, I don't know how you say that, um, that has come for forward and, and said that they voted for Hillary or that they don't support Trump. You, I, I know of yeah. nothing. They said, I'm with her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all kinds of skit. What, I, I think they call them uh, skitches, skinhead bitches. Yeah. Back in the day. I don't know if they still even have those. Do they even have skinheads anymore? I'm not sure. I don't know. I think they do in some parts of the world. Probably. Yeah. Anyways. So, 
Wittershins, Radio for Your Spiritual Side. It is about, oh, it's like 5.17, so any second now our guest is going to call in or he's sitting over there in Scotland waiting for us to stop babbling about Trump and shit. Um, but straight out of Scotland, we're going to have uh, the mage formerly known as uh, King Asbjorn Bute Torval. Straight out of Scotland. Straight out of Scotland. Crazy motherfucker named Asbjorn. Straight out of Scotland. Crazy motherfucker previously known as Asbjorn, who's uh, Darren Taylor. Um, he, uh, he's he got a bunch of projects, but I think his biggest thing now that he's plugging is uh, pre-soteric. And uh, pre-soteric's been pushing the line all week long about this normalizing magic. So uh, we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna probably talk about that, I'm thinking. And let's see. I, you know, listen we, to this wind, y'all. Listen yeah, to it. Listen to it. I mean, the, actually, the traffic noise is kind of down compared to the wind. I, I was thinking the traffic noise was really loud, but... Um, yeah, the wind is louder. So I don't know if he's calling us or we're calling him. We never really did cover that part. But, you didn't cover but, that part? Uh, we didn't he cover Well, he, 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 he every, every, every other time he called us. I've never called him. So he, he should probably be calling like any time. He's like sitting over there in Scotland, you know, and it's probably like several seconds behind, you know, when, and, and now he's just starting to hear us talk about him now. It's been uh, more than several seconds. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give him, you know, give him some slack, but yeah, I don't even know if I have him. I, I, I know I have it in here somewhere, but so Asbjorn, or I mean, uh, Darren, <laughs> call in now. Let's see. Uh, let me see if I can find him. I can call him. Asbjorn Yeah, yeah. He and, and he, he liked that. He was flattered. Yeah. But yeah, but we only call him that. We're mad at him. Let's see. But I haven't talked to Asbjorn in so long on here. I don't even know if I can find his phone number or his Skype number. Uh, Did but, you talk to him today? Yeah, yeah, we confirmed, confirmed it and everything. I I assume he knew it was the same number as we had before. Uh, and Skype does seem to be working. I'm signed in, chaos yes. Is chaos. It's supposed it is chaos. to be so we're Pacific Standard Time. It's supposed to, there's a wind advisory until three o'clock in the morning for us. Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to stop. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to click on him. I see Asbjorn Torval. Hopefully he still uses that account. I know he switched accounts and everything else, but let's see. Let's call him. Let's call him, man. He's not calling us. Don't call us. We'll call you. Oh, nice picture. <laughs> Bringing. Connecting. He isn't online. All right. Well, he's not on that account. All right, so I don't know what account you're on. Oh, you, 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 ah. you wow, Jesus Christ! You should be you hearing have this us. Big wind <laughs> chime in the back yeah. that usually doesn't make a sound because it's like way in the back, away from the wind, and it's big, and it is chiming. It was just chiming right now because that's how powerful it is. It stopped though, but it's shaking. Oh, oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm gonna sit from there. What? I'm just going to tell him now. <laughs> what? Uh, part of the problem is figuring out the time zone. So I, I told him, like, black, we, you know, when, it, when he f- yeah, when he first told me, you know, when he first contacted me today, I said, okay, it's it's one forty-five here now. So I'll see you at 5. You know, I figured the young man would know how to do a little bit of math. Just a little bit. But, uh, yeah. Because, you know, I, I don't know, you know, if they know about daylight savings time or what are we, are we on savings or standard time i don't even know which one we're this on one this one's saving so i don't even know if they understand I mean, that I don't know what it's called, but kind this, of is, thing. this one is the default <laughs> okay come on dude so so i i said now and he's like call in now yeah i have to actually type yes god kid I mean, there you go <laughs> Uh, all right, where the hell is it? Uh, incoming call. Okay, there we go. There's that sound that I hate to hear. All right, hold on, hold on. I don't even think your mic is open yet, but I believe we should have Darren on the line. Hello, I hear you. Oh my God! No, the house is about to blow away, but I hear you. <laughs> You're not getting any too much feedback on me, are you? Get, keep speaking. I'm turning up the volume here. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just wanting to make sure that our mic wasn't getting any feedback. 
Because we don't actually have the headphones plugged in. Yeah, us too. I, I don't. Uh, it's kind of hard for both of us to use headphones. We need a better mixing board or something like that. So I've got a got a monitor that's hopefully not picking up any feedback. But we hear you. You hear us. Yep. Darren, welcome to the show once again. Thank you. I'm actually here with Kinsey this time. I'm not alone. What's that? I'm here with Kinsey this time, so I'm not actually alone for this show. Oh, I, I, I kind of thought that you might be. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm trying to prop the boombox up so we can hear it better. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm moving some stuff around here. All right. This is the best I can do is prop it like that. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can put it there. <laughs> okay. We're adjusting some stuff because everything's trying to blow away up here. We're having like this. Uh, uh, we haven't been able to be up on the terrace in a while. And now there's this crazy windstorm from hell. But we already set up all the equipment up here. So we're not leaving, damn it. But straight out of Scotland, Darren, how's it going? And, and I, I got I got to ask you right away before we get into the magic stuff. Are y'all going to just fucking Brexit or what? You know, are oh. they going to Brexit? Are they not going to Brexit? I'm sick of hearing about it. I'm sure you're sick of hearing I, about plenty of stuff in this country, but Brexit, come on. What's up? In all honesty, I haven't really been following it. Um, I'm not, I don't pay attention to too much politics just because my time is built up elsewhere, but I'm, I'm completely against Brexit, just as a, but I don't really follow along with any of the news that's going on. It, it's going to go one way or the other. Um, I don't think that it's going to happen. I just think there's too many people resisting it, but, you know, who knows? You know, Trump got into office. So, hell, maybe we might get a Brexit. He, yes, Trump has proven that the impossible is possible uh, many times over. <laughs> I'll Wait, give him if, that. If if there is enough stupid in the world, then it doesn't matter how many people try to resist it; it will it'll happen. So we just have to adapt. Right on. So, well, first of all, I don't know. I don't know if you were doing pre-soteric when you were on the show last time. Tell our listeners a bit about that. Um, actually, I was. It was the we did the official release. Oh, on maybe we did. Well, what have you been up to since then over there at Presoteric? We've been rebooting Presoteric. We had a few months where we completely shut down. We didn't get anything out because we wanted to redo essentially the whole format of what we were doing, but also because I was in Michigan. It's, it's the Skype dropout. Hopefully it's going to so come we back. Were, I, mean, I think we're back. Yeah. We had that little Skype dropout that tends to happen overseas. <laughs> no worries. You, no worries. you, you are back. Your weather there too. Oh. It's crazy. How all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like there's a typhoon. <laughs> well, I think typhoons have rain. But yeah. I said like a typhoon. It's like a typhoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Darren, you were saying... <coughs> So we shut down for several months to reboot the whole of Presoteric, um, but also because I was in Michigan too, and didn't really have any of the the capabilities to actually post what we wanted to post. So we had to put it off over the course of Christmas and New Year to get everything up and running. And it's only just now that we've managed to release everything the way that we want it and to get our projects up and running again. Nice. I remember when we... Uh... When we finally left Santa Cruz to go to Grass Valley, I just I made sure I used everything I could that could run my business from my smartphone. <laughs> that turned out to be a good idea. It, but it's not easy though, especially when you're No, some stuff you some stuff's limited, you know, you don't see as much data. <laughs> yeah, it is. And there's it's definitely a limiting to what kind of content you can get out to. Which is also another reason, you know, that we, we want to make sure that everything we put out was high quality as possible, but we weren't always able to achieve that with, the, with just a cell phone. So we had to be just decided, like, we'll just shut it all down for a couple months, get it all the way we want it, and then re-release and reboot the whole project. Roger, Roger. 
and you're still you're publishing your books but did I, I believe you told me you were going to be publishing a um, uh, different publisher than you used to be um, we're going to be publishing exclusively through Presoteric now. Um, I'm no longer with Become a Living God. Oh. So it is all Presoteric. Interesting. I remember uh, one of the shows we had. We had a uh, was VK VK Jenanum was in a fight with some other mage on YouTube about something. It was just the most ridiculous fight you ever heard. And uh, now I guess the VK guy is picking a fight with EA co- coding. <laughs> yeah, I just I saw that one today. I said so that might be a story we might have to cover just because it's so stupid. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was, it it was these two guys who were actually like one guy was gonna like fly to the other guy's city and fight him in a city park and had this whole challenge video and. and uh, I don't. It wasn't even about a girl. It was about I don't know, something somebody said about somebody on YouTube. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but something somebody said about somebody on YouTube. That kind of crap. Yeah. It happens all the time. Magicians. Yes. The, I use the word magician loosely. Yeah. But it's yeah. just it's it's a dick measuring contest. You know, it's nothing more than that. It's it's people so, who want to be popular. So you're so okay. So you retained the. Uh, the copyrights to your books that's that's always good uh some people when they publish with somebody else they have a hard time getting them back i remember uh, when christian day was on here he had a big fight with wiser to get his stuff back uh, but um in the days since you've last been on Wittershins, there's been a book club that started and the book club will probably so be interested to hear about um i i i especially the book club i i was not given uh um uh, promotional copies of all of his works but I do recall digging through a large portion of uh, Magic It's All in Your Head and I will recommend that to our, our, our book uh, club because you know I, I believe a lot of that too you know and all about like uh, the psychology involved in Magic and that kind of thing <laughs> well we are currently re- uh, re-releasing Magic It's All in Your Head um, it's, it, we were calling it Magic It's All in Your Head 2, but it's the same book. It's just been remastered and reworked, and there's a whole lot of new stuff going on there, too. And we're expecting that to be released in the summer. It was supposed to be released earlier, but we had so much information to put in there that we just we needed to extend our time so that we could put more in it. But I'll, I'll say right here on air that when that book is released, everyone that's in that book club will get a free copy of that specifically for for that group oh book club Wittershins book club people recognize remember it, it, it's, it's recorded he said that he's like he's, he's bound forever now it'd be in the archives forever man yep. hey, I, I'm sure he re- like raised his right hand when he said that too so uh, magic it's all in your head then I, that's the one that's, that's the title I remember off the top of my head um, what else you got I think there was another book that caught my attention too as I recall we have a few that's coming we have the Presoteric Manifesto which is uh, we don't know when we're going to get this release because we're still compiling a lot of the information for it um, most of the stuff we have at Presoteric is still projects in development but it's going to be released this year at some point and that's more or less just a compilation of what Presoteric is, the system that we have, a basic outline of the system that we're building, and a lot of our policies and stuff for how we run Presoteric as, a, as an organization. Our bread and butter, if you will. So, normalizing magic. Explain this to us. Wait, well, there, there's a ghetto bird going by, but hopefully that's not too loud. But explain, explain what, what, what you mean by that. What you talking about, Willis? Normalization of magic is an idea that I sat and contemplated while the while Priest Attack was being rebooted and while we were shut down for a while. And it came mainly from me having to contemplate the real purpose of what this project was. And normalization was more or less what I leaned to. Now, when I say normalization, it's not just magic and occultism and spirituality becoming normal. That's, you know, I don't want people to misunderstand what I mean there. 
But normalization is a few different things. The first is taking it away from superstition. Magic, you know, you, know, you see a lot of occultists who bash religion specifically, usually Christianity, for having blind faith, for having blind belief, for conducting the way they do, and yet they exercise the exact same behaviors without a blink of an eye. And so what we're doing with normalization is attempting to bring science to magic. Now, we're going to clarify this too so people don't misunderstand. When we say bring science to magic, we're not saying rigid objective science 100%. Because objective, rigid science will say that anything subjective is going to be thrown out. You know, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What we're doing is approaching it with both psychology and science, which you could argue are the same thing. To say, here's the scientific mechanics of how these things work. Here's the psychological backing behind the phenomena that people are experiencing. We're recognizing objective mechanics of how magical uh, practices work, but also recognizing that those things depend upon subjective variables. So they depend upon subconscious association, which is different for every single person. So it's a mix of essentially chaos theory and basic science. It's, you know, it isn't rocket science, funnily enough. But normalization is taking magic away from what I would consider ancient mythologies and traditions. Now, it's not to say that we're throwing out mythology, because as we said with symbols, symbols are useful. It's part of our association, regardless of how we view that mythology. But the normalization is to step away from ancient traditions that are outdated, replacing them with things that fit with our modern times. So let's take Norse magic for an example. Nobody's doing sigils nowadays to make sure that their ship doesn't capsize at sea. Those things don't apply to today. And we find that a lot of the ancient traditions are exactly the same. People are repeating them because they're old, not necessarily because they're efficient. And we think that when you include science into these things and, and bring them into the modern day, that makes them more efficient. And it's the only aspect, really, of our society that hasn't caught up. Every aspect of our civilization has been modernized. The way we travel, the way we eat, the way we deal with illnesses. Religion, spirituality is the only thing that has remained with old traditions. So why don't we modernize them? What does it benefit from simply repeating what other people have done? People who were less educated, might I add. And I don't say that as an insult. I say that with the greatest of respects. The ancients were onto something. But I think that we can take it further. And I think that that development is how evolution happens. You don't progress by repeating the same thing. I, I understand the psychological component. Um, and I'm always fascinated when science proves old occult stuff, which that's pretty pretty much all they do. They never disprove anything, but they're always so slow. Um, so the, the the way that you kind of said it there was like us catch up to science, but science <laughs> science slowly catches up to these ancient things that everybody's ancestors always said like you know uh they always said you know uh we, we had an ancestral memory and that's why some people knew this stuff that their ancestors did it was in the ancestral memory well now we know that's dna and now we know that is in fact encoded in the dna but it was thousands of years ago that those old people were saying that and it's taken science thousands of years to figure out what that meant i can see the connection that they absolutely prove that the old people were right in those those little lofty little things that they would say uh, but science is so slow to get there uh and oh, i think I wouldn't we, uh, say that you know i, I wouldn't I say that it's magic catching up to science so to speak i would say that it's magic catching up with the modern day and science coming to magic rather than trying to resist it which it has but yeah I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you yeah, and I, I think I was, uh, I, I think I was doing uh, an Ask Uncle Birch today. We're ranting about that. It's like um, somebody's asking how important, you know, uh, planetary times, uh, pl planetary energies when you're doing a magic art. And, you know, my answer was like, this is a science, and science is the tracking of variables in our experiments, 
in hopes to produce the identical experiment under the identical conditions later. However, magic's recognizing that we are influenced by all these random energies flying around the universe, you know, from fucking stars that went supernova, supernova like, you know, millions of years ago are now flying into our space and affect it. Like, so what we're trying to do I, with magic, you know, uh, planetary magic and planetary times and all that is track as many variables as possible because they're going to be like a couple thousand more that we can't track no matter what we do. And that, that, that limits our science you know maybe science is affected by some of those same forces too but it's, it's all about you know tracking the variables controlling the variables and the variables in magic are just too much to track i think so far oh definitely that's one of the first things that we we talked about when the project opened in terms of chaos theory is and I'd say this applies for all magic, not just pre esoteric but you have the basic mechanics for how all magic works, and that's how everyone practices. You know, the conscious mind impresses upon the subconscious and takes that blueprint and manifests it through making unconscious changes in your behavior. But the chaos theory aspect of that is it was very enlightening for me in understanding why it's so difficult for magicians to get exact results when doing the exact same ritual in the same conditions, and that's because it's impossible to do the same ritual in the same conditions, because everything you ate that day, every decision that any, every single person in the world has made, that affects yes. you. The variables are innumerable, and so essentially what a magician is doing, or at least to my own speculation, no magician is in control of magic. It's like a river. We're simply placing something in it, hoping that the current is going to take it to a destination that we can somewhat guess with a degree of accuracy and that's what it is we're ascent it's essentially an exploit if you will you know we're using this constantly flowing current and we can say okay if i put it in here and measure it with these variables i can kind of i have this window for error and i think that's more or less it it's the it's not a case of we we you know a plus b equals c it's a case of you got the whole alphabet and you're just trying to take a few letters and hit the right number you know, it's, it's it's an art. You know, and the more the more margin for error we give ourselves, the the higher accuracy we're going to get in getting what we want to manifest. That's that's kind of the way that that I see it, based on kind of what chaos theory tells us about variables. And what's interesting about when you consider chaos theory with magic is that every single action that every person has taken affects your ritual. Since the beginning of time, every single part of life is simply a domino effect. Well, so I've often said that, uh, you know, I was taught it was one of the laws of metaphysics when I was a kid. It's like every action has a reaction. And physics says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Not so much in metaphysics. It has a reaction, but it's not always equal and neither is it opposite. You know, discuss. Mm. I just like the term metaphysics as a whole. It's actually how we came up with the name presoteric. Um, metaphysics. I like that name, by the way. Presoteric. I love it. It's. It, it was one of those light bulb ideas that we didn't intend on creating it. It just kind of happened. But the term metaphysics, if you break down the word, means beyond science or beyond physics. And I do not. I personally do not believe the. You know. It, it, I personally do not believe that magic in the occult is beyond science, you know, quite the contrary. But people, the, the, the working definition of metaphysics is, to me, seems that a lot of people use it as an excuse to not have to justify why they believe what they do. They, it's like, well, science can't explain this, so I'm not going to. But yeah. I find that to be a cop-out for people who want their beliefs to not be challenged and I think that as a community we have an obligation to challenge each other's views because that's again how we grow it's how we develop and this is one thing that I admire greatly about scientists is that they want to be proven wrong whereas people in our communities get very defensive when you say anything that opposes what they what they think or how they view the world and oh, yeah. that's not a progressive <laughs> attitude, you know. And for a community that prides itself on being progressive, they don't have a very progressive attitude towards a lot of their own, you know, 
their own beliefs and their own views on things. You know, I, 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 I find about, even in the occult on, on, on you know, social media, people want to hear what they already know. They want to hear yeah, people yeah. express things that they can sound like experts on, you know, responding to. And yeah, anything outside of that, people get kind of tweaky. <laughs> Well, the, the biggest problem we've run into with Presoteric is that people talk about, well, how do you explain all these personal experiences, and why is it that you do not believe in gods? And it's like, well, we're not saying that they don't exist. We're saying that there's no evidence or data that we can produce to say anything other than a guess. And that's the thing, is that beliefs are guesses. Unless, if, you don't, if you have data, it's no longer a guess or a belief, it's a fact. It has substantial data to back it. And pre-soteric, since we're focused on, on science, and it's thing that we do not have data or facts or any evidence to support, we're not going to say one way or the other what it is. We can only say, well, there's no evidence for that, so we cannot subscribe to it. And that's the way that I see it. And with Presoteric, we're, we're conducting experiments on various different practices and dissecting them through you know, science and various scientific methods. And what it's doing is proving that, well, in fact, when magicians are doing magic, yeah, there's something happening and there's definitely a measurable result. So, one, we proved that magic, or what, at least what we refer to as magic, is doing something. But I think that when you cut away the superstition and... And I'm not saying the symbols are useless. In fact, it's the, you know, it's the hallmark of what allows that kind of machine to operate, if you will. But I think that when you take away belief and replace that with data and evidence, you have something a lot more valuable. And again, if people want to be so different from Christians, that's how you have to do it. You have to stop with this blind faith. You know, people say, well how do you explain all these experiences? And it's like, well, I could sit here and just and dissect your experiences and give you, you know, psychological phenomena, but the problem is, is that you don't want me to tell you. You don't want the facts, because that's not what you're looking for. And this is the biggest problem with the community, is it doesn't want truth, it wants validation. And my issue isn't with the fact that they want to believe. I mean, I want to believe in a lot of the things that I read, but the evidence shows differently, and that's what that's what matters to me is the evidence is the facts is the data but what we find is that it's not so much the belief or this blind faith that does any damage it's the fact that people then use that to justify damaging behavior and that's where my problem is because there's a lot of people who come to these communities and ruin their lives they create deeper psychological issues for themselves when it's completely unnecessary. They could come to these communities and have real benefit, real advantages, which is why I support creators like yourself and like Fair Xavier, because we're putting out content that people use to their advantage, not to their detriment. And that is the single-handedly most important thing. You know, you look at a lot of these groups, they're no better than cults. And I think that we can do better. We can be a beacon rather than being the, sh the same shit with a different label on it. Yes. So many people want to act like, you know, Christians. Like, you, know, yeah, you become yeah. a priest. You want to act like that kind of priest. Like, no, no, that's not the kind of priest we need over here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> people want to emulate the, the worst examples out there. Um, and, you know, you're talking a lot about um, you know, psychological impact, and and, and I, it always struck me as like you know, it was when I started studying psychology, I was deep in my studies of witchcraft, so they kind of tied into each other. But it always struck me it's like the two main sources for all psychology we're ever going to get are Freud or Jung, uh, and Freud and Jung kind of come together. And, and I remember uh, when Jung came up with his theories Freud warned him told him don't release your findings or it will unleash a wave of mysticism across the planet <laughs> and I don't know if that ha I, I don't really know if there's any statistics if there was more mysticism after after Jung released his findings but you know I've always found that like you know in in general witchcraft uh, anything that's a bowl or a cup is a yoni and everything that's a stick or a blade is a penis 
Well, that's Freud's symbolism. <laughs> for Freud, everything was a sexual symbol for something. For Jung, mm. there was a set of universal symbols that had the same subconscious stimuli on everybody, and then a set that is personal, that nobody's ever going to know, uh, the, developed in your own subconscious. And I've, I've, I've found myself milking those ideas for magic forever. And so that's, that's at the core of a lot of the stuff that I'm working on. So um, absolutely. Um, but I was taught that that's where the magic muscles lie in the subconscious. Yeah. You know, I think, I mean, I think in terms of every, every stick is a, is a penis and whatnot is, I, th- I think it reflects a lot on the focus of where most people's attention is at with this community. I think that, I mean, you and I both know our community is full of escapists, and what they need, they they, they need to get laid. That's the problem. That's what's holding them back. That's what's causing them all these issues. Yeah. They've got all this frustration, and they don't have anywhere to let it out. Yeah. yeah. This ain't yeah. That way, but I think, I think if half the people in this community just had some good sex, they would be fine. There wouldn't be any of these issues. The community would stop bickering and we'd have peace for a little while. Well, remember, uh, I, I think we, uh, back when uh, when Utu got deep platform from uh, Pantheacon, you know, me and Marta were talking about, you know, Pantheacon is a, a conference over here on the West Coast that if you're in, like, Northern California and you're anybody who's somebody you kind of had to go to. And uh, we always went to it. And then one time we were like, you know, we were, if you know, it was, it's right around Valentine's Day. We were having our own good time in the hotel room most of the time. And then we we're g- going to go out to this party. And we're like, you know, Marta's getting all gussied up. And we're like, and she's going, God, I'm, you know, I'm not even really sure if I want to go to this party. I said, you know what? Everybody at that party is just there to try and get laid. We don't have to go to that party. <laughs> and we didn't go to that party. We didn't, we didn't go to a whole lot of parties that time. And we went to the absinthe party. Is that the time when Sasha was crawling around your womb and we didn't even know and you're drinking? It was going to be green. Yeah. Yeah, we th- thought our kid was going to be green because he apparently got an, an absinthe bath. I didn't know I was pregnant. She didn't know she was pregnant. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody was there. They were, they were going to the parties that night. Everybody was just trying to get laid. I mean, that's, you know, half the people at bars, half the people out at night. That's, that's the whole purpose. You know, everybody could just admit it. It's like why most people are there. <laughs> this is it. So it's just what they need. Get another system and, and move on. I think it would solve a lot of problems in our community. If they just got some hole. I think that would solve yeah, more than just the community. I think that solve the world. <laughs> yeah. Then unfortunately we get that, you know, those predatory types rolling around, they screw everything up for everybody. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. All right. We should probably take a little break, and we'll come back and talk to uh, Presoteric. I'm just going to call you guys Presoteric right now. Um, I'm looking at what song I was going to play. All right. Wittershins. We'll be right back.
Wittershins Radio, where I think it's a Twister Auntie M, and we're back with Darren and Kinsey from Presoteric, talking about normalizing magic and stuff, scientific <laughs> approach and things. So, I was thinking, uh, as we were taking the break, um... Uh, in my lifetime, actually, it was close to 10 years ago now, uh, there was this, I think it was before we had really Facebook, so I don't know how we were getting this crazy news back then, but across my desk, that science had discovered that inanimate objects, and specifically uh, semi-precious metals and jewelry, uh, uh, stones and things, held the memory patterns of the people that possessed them. And science at that time was then working on a, a machine or something to try and extract those memories. I haven't heard any follow-up material on this study. But, you know, it struck me at that time. It's like, okay, well, cool. Science has just caught up a few thousand years. Every magic known to man, I believe, has utilized those principles. You, ha- you got something of that person, you know better a body part or their blood or their hair or their fingernails or that kind of thing or something they wore something they touched all the to do the magic upon and science just figured that out and, and you know in addition to that you know that the stuff we know about dna now you know i it used to be when i was a kid you know the three biggest ones you know you want hair blood or fingernails from your target and now we know the reason why we want that is because the dna so really, anything that contains their DNA is is equally a, a, a good link. Um, and then you watch CSI, and you come up with some really creative ways to extract DNA. <laughs> Love that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've come up. You know, I I I have actually extracted somebody's fingerprints off a car door handle using uh, tape, like I saw on CSI. Actually, I learned it when I was a cop <laughs> for uh, for magical purposes. Um, but so that, there's just one. What, what other what things have you seen science has discovered that are actually old discoveries of magic? Well, mostly what I've been looking into over the past probably the past couple of years, actually, is more along the lines of hypnotism and mentalism. I watch a lot of Darren Brown. And I know that our good friend Freer Xavier loves Darren Brown. And that was kind of what started my fascination for the psychological aspects of, of magic. Because a lot of what he was doing was exposing a lot of the charlatans that we have in our community, at least on the big scale, in how it's easy to fake having these kind of supernatural abilities and whatnot. 
And I became fascinated with doing that, and it kind of enlightened me quite a bit on a lot of the people who I was surrounded by at the time, and, and a lot of the things that they were doing and the methods they were using. And so, I, me, the biggest um, discoveries that science has made has been more along the fields of um, psychology. And specifically when you look at phenomena like pareidolia. So pareidolia, for those who don't know what that is, is seeing patterns in randomness. So if I was to draw like three lines on a bit of paper and hold it up, a lot of people are going to see a smiley face. But it's not actually a smiley face, it's just a couple of lines on a piece of paper. Our minds are constantly trying to make sense of what we see. And pareidolia is how we do that. We see certain shapes and we try to put something to, if anything, a personal meaning or an association, if you will, to that thing. And this is what I believe is where we see a lot of our quote-unquote signs from. You see that shadow in the smoke, or you know, you get these signs. It's not that those signs are anything supernatural. It's that that's what your mind is leaning to. That's how you're associating that thing with. And as we know, magic's dealing with the subconscious, and the subconscious deals specifically with association to every single thing that we see, interact with, smell, taste, touch, yeah. everything. Well, that that you're yeah. you're going straight back to young again, um, and, and this is what I'm always trying to tell people about, like dream journals and stuff. It's like, there there he he said that there was a certain set of universal symbols that we all have the same uh, subconscious association with and the other set of symbols everybody has their own and each symbol is derived from personal um, personal experience and what that, that symbol is associated with like you know a house might not mean home it might mean a trauma it more likely means a trauma that that person suffered in that particular home that that's an image of you know that kind of shit it's like nobody's ever going to be able to uh, interpret your dreams unless your dreams are just full of those those uh, those those uh, symbols that everybody sees the same thing it's like everybody tends to be operating off of those those personally derived symbols actually um i can actually kind of bump in here with this idea. Yeah, bump um, I've on actually in. been looking into a lot of the symbolism, both the universal symbolism and the personal symbolism, and I think that's one of those things, especially when you're doing sigil work or anything where you're trying to make up a symbol or something like that, where it makes it impossible to decipher sigils, especially if you don't know who made it or what the actual purpose is, because universal symbols are something that we can understand as widespread across the community. Like if you see um, the typical symbol for waves or water, which would be those little curvy little lines. Um, but to somebody else that might mean travel or danger if they don't know how to swim, or it might even be you know, a river that they have to cross instead of a giant body of water. But it'll always pertain to uh, some kind of water element or water symbol really um, but it depends on the person and that's where you get into the personal symbolism rather than just being universal and I think I think if you were to show somebody a stop sign they would know that that's a stop sign even if it's not in English or if you're in another country generally red is a no-go you know yeah Where green would be yeah go like ahead. symbols and colors yeah that's universal and that's yeah. why 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 uh, they're using them and the other really cool thing is if you go further into symbolism um with universal and personal you can also play into also color therapy and like art therapy um which yes. is actually uh psychologically is pretty universal as well um but I've it's another one of those to add on to and you can layer it well when i uh I was a younger man. I, I noticed that they uh, they they went through the entire school district that I was in, and they painted all the schools light blue and or yellow. Yep. And I had just learned that those colors stimulate the mind. And the, that, that 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 be, 
Yeah, yeah. But uh, maybe it's from thinking. But like for for educational purposes, yeah, they 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 went through this thing where they all of a sudden started pla- painting the entire school district yellow or light blue, which are colors of air for me, and it made total sense. And, and I found a lot of that over the years. They they paint schools colors to stimulate the mind, and they're the same colors that we would associate in the in the occult. In, in, in red, you know, red, yeah, it's used for stop signs, stop lights, cop cars. Uh, used to be you could pay for red print in your ad in the yellow pages. I know that shows how old I am. Uh, to, to draw attention. But that's the same thing we'd use, uh, use it for in the occult. So those definitely, yes, uh, colors definitely cross, cross over. Yeah. If you want to talk more about the school systems and everything, they've even linked... Um, like, I don't know exactly how it works, but um, sports teams that wear red are they play more aggressive and they're usually um, a more successful team as far as like sports go and stuff like that. Um, but even um, you'd mentioned the painting like schools yellow and blue, they do that with medical institutions as well, hospitals, doctors, Absolutely. And stuff. yes, yes, yes. So, color theory is a major thing and it's it's proven and it works and it's. There is science behind it. Well, yeah, it's not just a, even just a theory. It's a, it's a trackable vibration that comes from the color. I think we probably have machines that can feel the vibration now. You know, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, every, yeah, everything's got its own vibration. And that that's an occult standard, you know. Color psychology is actually one of my favorite um, aspects to include with various different techniques and stuff that I use in my own personal practice. Um Red is typically more leans towards dominance, more dominance yeah. aggression, whereas blue is a lot more calming and likable, which is kind of ironic when you think of New England Patriots, but <laughs> it's another story for another time. Yellow tends to be for people actually who are, at least in terms of how it's typically applied, um, for people who like to question and contemplate and aren't really bothered either way, but it's also for people who are indecisive too. Yellow stimulates being able to sit and contemplate which is why you'll find where at least in the occult in terms of study yellow is a color for it because it, it, it inspires to entertain an idea without going one way or the other yes yeah absolutely you know just uh, something we need more of you know the advertising industry seems to know what we know about colors um, they I believe, uh, I think it's uh, here in America, the, the subway sandwich sign is a specific combination of colors that stimulates hunger. They know that. Uh, the McDonald's sign was to simulate breasts. <laughs> Psychology is everything, man. It's, it, it's all in your head. <laughs> so, but before... Before I go further, I noticed that Jillian's in the chat room, and I didn't see her earlier. And Jillian, <coughs> um, if you missed some of the show, you need to go back and listen to the beginning of the show, where our guest, who also is an author with a book that I would highly suggest uh, having in the uh, the Wittershins uh, reading, what, what do you call it, book club? Yeah, the book club. <laughs> uh, magic, it's all in your head. Um, he offered a, a, a deal for the, the people in the Wittershins book club of uh, a free book I believe something like that so go back and check it out see exactly what he said because it's all recorded and he has to he has to do that now <laughs> but hello Jillian hello Sarah Jillian and Sarah late to the party yes um, but we're um, I thought it was still 9 Eastern I don't know wait 9 8 7 6 no that would be that would be no at five. It's it's five Pacific time, which would be five, six, seven, eight, eight Eastern. Um, Sarah, yeah, this fucking time change shit that we have over here screws everybody up for half of the year. And then we put our clocks back, and everything's okay. Okay, so where were we? Uh, we're talking about color now. Color psychology. Color psychology. I've often seen. Uh, the entirety of Solomon's work is referred to as an ancient system of psychology. Uh, 
It's a huge thing. It's like uh, mom just said that's that's where the magic comes from. Certain part in our brain that not everybody's using. Everybody could, but they don't. Not everybody's just using their brain, period. I don't think it needs anything. Well, to be like I meant, well, 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 you know, we live in America over here. Yeah, Kinsey knows that. She's from here. Uh, yeah, clearly people aren't using their brain. Yeah. yeah. My God, this place is blowing away. <laughs> Heavy storms. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, Sarah, yeah, it'd be eight. Eight your time, I guess, from now on. Uh, we may switch someday. Tuesdays is not the best night for live listeners we get uh, way more listeners in the archives and we're on like six different formats now i can't even keep track of them but we're getting good hits on all of those things but but uh not a whole lot in the live listeners so i don't know tuesday 5 p.m might not be our regular time forever especially marta's got this 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 place uh it's got uh what are those the oysters? Yeah, she's into the oysters, man. And they only do their special oyster deal on Tuesday nights. So at the very least, we might have to do a remote broadcast from there. But all right, yeah. So Sarah's in the chat room. Jill, Jillian's in the chat room. Hello, y'all. Uh, okay, so I saw that Presoteric. You're you're doing classes. You're doing stuff through Gumroad uh, or the the other one too. Uh, God, I forget what it's called, but I keep meaning to check it out. Uh, uh, God. Yeah, Patreon. Patreon. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that we're running at the moment, but it's with us just having the reboot just recently. We're, a lot of the stuff that we're doing is still under development. You know, we're, we're working to get all this stuff out. Now, we do have new releases coming. But there's going to be several over the next couple of months while we fill out our catalog with it. And the first one of those is mind virus the thought vaccine and that's going to be the first thing that's being released which is this friday coming and that's a, a 60 minute approximate audio course recorded by my myself and kinsey here and it's discussing several different areas of the community and magic as a whole um, so it's a it's specifically aimed at giving people insight into a lot of the current issues with occult, spiritual, and magical traditions, and as well as their respective social groups too. So we're offering new solutions to aid in research, practice, and overall quality of experience. We're looking at some of the real dangers behind various spiritual ideologies, and outlining the psychological phenomena that allows people to be manipulated and um, put, in, put into real physical and mental danger too. Uh, a lot of the topics we're going to be covering is, you know, the lack of psychological and scientific understanding in general over the whole cult. Why having awareness is so beneficial to any practitioner or anyone just involved in these communities. Why faith and belief can be dangerous. Basic structures of the mind, how to influence the mind, dangerous ideologies, alternative methods of practice. Um, looking at the trap of subjective faith, but the benefits of... Um, scientific variables and evidence um, and removing the, the, the concept of removing belief in place of real data it's essentially a, a crash course on how to implement science into magic rather than using it as a crutch which I find most people do is to, a lot of people in our community reference things like quantum mechanics and basic energy sciences almost to validate their their beliefs in healing crystals and things like that, but they don't ever take science beyond just mentioning quantum physics. And yeah. it's really irritating because they use this scientific kind of terminology as a crutch, but not with, yeah. without paying any due to science whatsoever. And, you know, pre-satiric follows the strict scientific method. We follow data and we get data from experiments. And that's one of the things that pre-satiric is isn't just going to do but is actually doing right now um, now I, we can't really talk about the specifics because to do that would compromise the whole experiment but we're working on an experiment right now which is going to take maybe a month or two to complete and we're going to be releasing that one part of it's going to be free which is going to be the actual documented paper that we write on it which will include uh, you know it could be 20 30 pages depending on how much data we receive and that's going to disclose everything we did in the experiment, the results we got, how we conducted it, 
as well as our conclusions and our hypothesis from the beginning. But we're also going to be releasing aside from that. And this is going to be for a small price tag because, you know, it's, we have to be able to fund other projects within Presoteric. And this is extra material that people can, can watch and listen to. And we're creating roughly a 45 minute documentary on the actual experiment, which we've done the best to get great production value out of. But we're also going to be releasing around about 10 hours of video and audio footage that we recorded throughout the whole experiment. And that's our own audio logs and our own video logs. So from the setup of this project to the very end, so that people can see literally every single thing we did, tested, the, the issues we had in, in doing it. It's essentially, a, we're disclosing everything publicly, how we did this experiment, because we want to be transparent with, with how we've done everything. So once that experiment's done in two months, roughly, that's going to be available to to everyone. Okay, you're putting that. Uh, what is it? Patreon.com. Um, it's www.patreon.com/presoteric. Or if you go to our Gumroad, which is our which is our official store, it's just Gumroad.com/presoteric. All right. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I, I keep meaning to check out Presoteric, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of work on Gumroad. Um, Somebody asked me to do a uh, was a, a class on uh, uh, planetary magic, and I, I when I looked at uh, what Freder Xavier was putting out, it's like you know he's covered <laughs> he's covered everything that I would normally want to say in a class like that. So I, I did a whole other one. It was like how uh, was it uh, where science and magic collide, and uh, that one was about. Um, the, the NASA has already um, calculated all of the frequencies that the planets transmit in. And we have, it, in, right in front of us, you know, computers, uh, even, even phones, we can get a tone generator that can reproduce those tones. We can, we can have a, a thing vibrate at the frequency of that planet when working with that planet you know there's plenty more in that class but um the kind of ideas i come up with when i'm thinking thinking of science like okay if we're going to be doing planetary magic there's a frequency that that planet vibrates at and there's a subharmonic that can pr be produced by the human voice most times if you could i don't know chant in the proper tone that might help some of the things that I think of when I think of planetary magic. It's something that we do actually plan to look into and actually experiment with too. Um, we, we have a lot of experiments that we need to do. Um, you know, we, we set Presoteric up, I think, September last year. Uh, maybe, if I, maybe it was before September, it could have been August. And, you know, we've set up with this project to conduct real experiments on, you know, various topics, various subjects, and this is the first one that we, you know, that we've that we've planned and got organized, and it's as well as it's the logistics of it too. You know, we need to conduct these experiments properly, and you know, we're we're using the ethical principles um, from the American Psychological Association to actually conduct these. So that, that you know, it's we're we're doing this um, ethically and properly. But the problem with doing these experiments is the logistics, because we need to get people to do the experiment, but they can't know that it's an experiment, otherwise it compromises the results. And so have, being able to set these experiments up properly with you know, and getting all the logistics um, taken care of is a lot of hard work. You know, it seems easy. Oh, you know, we're going to do this experiment and get all this data, but it's the logistics of actually doing that are a lot harder than what people think. You know, we have to worry about getting release forms for the data once we've collected yeah. it. We have to make sure that the people that we have, that we have done the initial experiment on, and bear in mind, these experiments don't cause any harm to any of these people. We're not putting them through, you know, the the night's gauntlet or anything like that. It's it's generally harmless experiments, but we're doing a lot of the things that potentially if they didn't know it was an experiment could cause them real harm and so we have to make sure that everyone that gets involved with it that afterwards we publicly disclose look this 
this was an experiment and here's kind of our, our advice for how to move forward with that. And overall, it's going to benefit the community in the long run, having this data there for, for people to access. But it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work and a lot of investment, not just with money, but with time also. Right on. <laughs> I just got disturbed by my dog's big head coming up here. Okay, he saw he, he's following you, looking for treats. All right, let's take us uh, take us a little break, about eight minutes. Yeah, we're gonna go down, check in on some things, and we'll be right back with Presoteric, Kinsey, and Darren. <laughs> The nice guy was on the cover of all those magazines Why would they want to do a thing like that? I said, well, he killed all those people In Oklahoma City She said, nonsense People don't kill people Car bombs kill people I said, well, yeah, Ma, but they gotta do something with it why don't they just get Mike Tyson to bite off both his ears? And I say, true revolutionaries never bomb buildings. True revolutionaries never bomb buildings. It attracts to Attention They never bomb buildings A little girl down my block Was born with silicone in her breasts it Turned out her grandma and her mother had Both had the implants done And well, evolution took care of it this time around And I wondered what it is about so many women with big breasts make them look so sad and I thought well, maybe it has something to do with the weight the burden there has to carry in the world to feed it to be the object of its desires no wonder what burdens the rest of us are carrying all the time I couldn't help thinking And do nothing except look everybody I see in the eyes And not be the first to avert my eyes No matter what I was planning to be gone for ten minutes And things started happening And I didn't return for two years By which time I was the heavyweight champion of the world And the expectant father of sixteen children By thirteen different women In a fishing village in coastal Spain It was Our Lady of Abortion Sunday afternoon All the pregnant women in their first trimester Were filing before the priest To receive the blessing of Try again sometime, try again The old barber had dyed his hair green For the occasion and pierced his nipples And was riding his skateboard To the statue of Conan O'Brien where he was doing backflips for the kids Who threw coins Given to them by their parents A visiting lecturer Achingly handsome And just finished giving a How to build bombs in your basement 
that seminar in the park All the young girls put away their notebooks dreamily And put their lines in their hair Chimpanzee who managed to type out Hamlet three years before Was sitting in the third floor office of the driver's license building Typing out zoning ordinances Typing out learner's permits Coffee shops anymore talking revolution. Nah, they get a Starbucks to go. They go back to their basketball games. When they see who can jump higher, who can jam, who can take it to the rack. And they all wear baseball caps, except they don't say Yankees or Dodgers or Cardinals anymore. They say Nike, Reebok, Adidas. Cause the pro players don't play for teams anymore. Play for shoe companies And the kids aren't fooled Now nah, they're just biding their time Waiting for the millennium to come When all the computers will crash Cause the best scientists in the world Forgot to make them read Zero to revolutionaries Never bought Dark thoughts Like I sometimes get Suddenly everything clear And I realize that the only purpose for revolution Is to be able to love who you want How you want When you want And where you want So I took off all my clothes And stole a boat Rode out to the middle of the lake And I jumped in I look back at you Said, come on Get wet True revolutionaries Never bomb buildings True revolutionaries Never bomb Dan Byrne on Wittersheet Radio with a little bit of backup from your Uncle Phil. And I got to tell you all about HexFest coming August 9th to the 11th. It's coming up, people. It's coming up fast. I'm scared. Got to figure out child care and shit. Uh, uh, join the magic. Join in the magic. Of the Crescent City, tales of the magic of the Crescent City of New Orleans stretch back over the centuries. It's an enigmatic place where voodoo, hoodoo, Christianity, and even Christianity blend at the crossroads of the spiritual power. On August 9th to the 11th, 2019, Brian Kane, Christian Day, and the Witches of New Orleans present Hexfest, a weekend of witchery held in the heart of the historic French Quartier. The conference opens with a riverboat ritual and dinner held on an authentic steamboat 
on the Mississippi River, followed by two full days of workshops, drumming and ritual, held at the Bourbon's Orleans Hotel, a venue riddled with a history of hauntings. Hexfest has gathered witches, root workers, voodoo priests, and other magical teachers from within New Orleans and around the world to offer their time-honored wisdom. Between workshops, the attendees will love the magical shopping in our on-site vending hall, where you can purchase powerful ritual tools, signed books, exquisite jewelry, and spellcrafts handmade by true practitioners. Presenters <coughs> for the 2019 Hexfest hail from across the spectrum of witchcraft and magic and include Brian Kane. Christian Day, Austin Shippy, Brian Ballard, Cariel Crow, Christian Steffens, Dorothy Morrison, the Dragon Ritual Drummers, Fiona Horn, Hudu Senmuis, Lady Rhea, Laura Tempest Zaycroft, Michael Carell, really? Melissa Mayhem. Patricia, uh, Patricia Telesco, Rosemary Ellen Gilly, Sally Ann Glassman, Sandra Maria Wright, Senelias, Sorita D'Este, or D'Este, Star Cassis, Star Ravenhawk, Witch Doctor U2, and Yeshe Matthews. And here we're going to see if, if Christian mm-hmm. Day fixed the part that was messed up in this last part. I'll cringe if it didn't. Okay. Well, this part, whether you're a beginner or an advanced practitioner. Okay. He did. Yes. Hexfest will help you discover. No, he didn't. Oh, okay. He didn't. Hexfest will help you discover the secrets of witchcraft and expand the mystery of the magical arts. Get tickets. Tickets are going to sell out, people. you got to get to HexFest.com. It's like April right now. August. Right around the corner. And also starts with an A. You've got to get tickets. Get to HexFest.com. And uh, if you want your uh, event or whatever plugged on, on Wittershins Radio, send it to us, man. Radio at gmail.com. Uh, you got guests you want to suggest, stuff you want to get plugged, what have you. Um, Wittersons Radio at gmail.com. Uh, we'll, we'll get it on the air. Maybe as dramatical as the last thing we just did. Um, checking out the chat room. Uh, people, yeah, people talking about Hexfest. Hello, Ian. I think you just jumped in there. Uh, I have found Wittersons not on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Well, we do. We do appear on YouTube um, after the show YouTube uh, rebroadcasts our feed, we're on uh, iHeartRadio uh, Tumblr, SoundCloud uh, Spreaker.com a uh, bunch of places I can't even keep track of all the places that our feeds go into anymore but if you're just joining us we're with, with uh, Kinsey and Darren from Presoteric and uh, we've been talking about the normalization of magic and hoping the house doesn't blow away up here. Uh, it sounds like we're on a sailboat. You hear that? <laughs> that sounds like a sailboat. Like we're sailing along the Wittershins Tower. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. So, Darren, you're still there, I take it. I heard you chuckling We're in the background. Still here. Yeah. Well, look at the Zebo's about to fly out. Yeah, I have to fix that about, but after every win, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're just looking around the Wittersons Tower, seeing everything blow away. How are you over there in Scotland? Is it still winter? What's going on there? It's always winter here. <laughs> it's always winter in Scotland. No, it's always winter in Michigan. It's never winter here. <laughs> Two places I've never been. <laughs> Sarah Osborne saying hi to you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, you guys keep talking. 
You guys keep talking. The laptop's trying so to blow away. <laughs> well, we were just, we're tenacious. Even though the wind was picking up, we said, no, we put all this shit out here. We're going to sit here and we're going to do the show right here. <laughs> Instant regret. <laughs> At least the, the, the traffic noise and the uh, ghetto birds have been pretty light tonight. So it's not too bad up here on the tower. Up here in the, the throes of Hollywood. <laughs> So you got yeah, so you got stuff on Presoteric. You got a uh, uh, Gumroad channel too. You guys are teaching classes. You publishing your own books now. It's all, right. always good. Always good. I, I still think you should throw one of those at Wiser and see what happens, man. Get, like mass published or something like that. <laughs> we might, you know, we might as as we go forward, you know. At the moment, we're focusing more on getting our free content out than anything else. You know, we have our projects in development, which are, you know, they're behind a small paywall. It's reasonable. But we're trying to get one video out every day, which we've done successfully this week. Um, you know, different kinds of content, too. It's not the same types of videos. We've got our live streams that we do twice a week. We've got our polls that we do every week. We've got a lessons and lectures video. We've got updates. You know, we're... We're trying to give variety as well as the same content consistently. And we're, we're trying to get more writers involved with Presoteric to, to write our blogs and, and get those produced too. So we're, we're looking at getting a good volume of content, but also adhering to a strict quality of that content too. And then at the same time, we're working on like community outreach, um, really connecting with the magical community that already exists and you know the kind of people who are looking for something beyond you know the day-to-day -day magical stuff that you can even just find on Pinterest we're we're giving real information to magicians who are looking for the real facts and the real information that exists that they don't know how to find um, so it's really just building yeah. up the community conversation we're building conversations really and we're constantly looking for people outside of our current team right now you know we have, we have a team of five people right now um it's it's continually growing but we're looking for more writers we're looking for people to host experiments because one of the things i mean we have a, a job out right now it's a volunteer position for hosting our upcoming experiment because we need to you know, we, we, for myself and, and Kinsey and John, who run the company, for us to to involve directly with those experiments, then compromises it. So having people come onto the team every time we do a new experiment allows us to have them actually run it while we give them the direction and kind of the idea for our experiment. It lets us collect the data in an unbiased way so that we're subjective and we can look at it in a very pure light rather than having any kind of opinion whatsoever about it. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, yeah, objective. <coughs> so, um, you're, oh, that's what I was going to say. You're, the live streams you've been putting out, do you, is there, I know I'm on all your pages, so I don't know which page it's coming from. Is that a pre-soteric uh, Facebook page? How do people find your, your live streams? You can put them out every couple of days or so, really. Um, we're putting a video out every day. Our live every streams day. are roughly three times a week. Um, two of those are just normal live streams, and one of those is specifically for poll results. We run a poll every week where we ask the community a question, and we take that data, we turn it into a graph, we look at what, you know, generally speaking, what is the community thinking on certain questions, and then we release that data publicly to get an idea or get a sense of where the community is leaning to on certain topics and certain issues and certain questions. Um, but we're getting that out, you know, something out daily. Um, our videos, there are, they always get uploaded to our YouTube straight out. So, you know, you can find those both on YouTube and on our Facebook. Um, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash presotericism because presoteric for some reason as a username is already taken but no page exists and Facebook doesn't <laughs> know about it so it's, ah, it's terrible yeah small little bump but we're, we're still working through it or you know just type presoteric into Google um, you'll, you'll find us yeah I, I've been doing a thing oh uh, god lately uh, went through some I think it's uh, restream.io to, to stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time I've noticed that the, the Facebook one isn't saving, but the YouTube one is. 
So it's uh-huh. like I'll broadcast live to Facebook, but then it's it's gone later, so nobody can see that. But but on YouTube, it's always popping up. So oh, I've been playing with different formats for uh, for that. Well, we've tried to make our you know our our stuff as easily accessible as possible. So we have on our YouTube. Um, is exactly the same as it is on our Facebook videos tab. So the layout is exactly the same. So, you know, if, if people only wanted to tune in for our YouTube stuff, you can find all of it on YouTube. Or if you wanted to follow our stuff on Facebook too, you have all the stuff there. And, you know, we're, we don't have an official website because we don't find it necessary. You know, Facebook gives us everything we need. It's, it's much more easily accessible than having to go to a different, you know, web platform. And so, you know, every single thing that we do, you can find it on our Facebook page, and, and it links to our various platforms if anyone wants to, you know, support them. Um, you know, they're more kind of paid-related, they're our patron and our gum road. But aside from that, every single thing is done through our Facebook page because it's, it's just so much easier and so much easier to navigate for people when they get involved, too. Yeah. But I'm looking, I, I'm looking for something that broadcasts to several of my Facebook pages and YouTube at the same time, and I can see the chats from all those channels. It's like that. That's, and I know Christian Day's been playing with the same thing, and I don't think he's satisfied with the format he found either, but um, that kind of thing. It's like I, if I go live on YouTube, I got people right away. If I go fi- live on Facebook, right away. It's like all the channels. I have so many channels. I want to be on all of my my own fucking channels. Channel. I have the best channel. But I want to be on all of my channels at the same fucking time. I'm just hunting around. So if you find something that does that, let me know. <laughs> PM, PM me later. I um, think you can actually, if you, if you go to the YouTube live stream and download OBS, you can stream to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Well, you know, I, unfortunately it was... Uh, it was the uh, the killer guy in New Zealand. It was like the killer guy in New Zealand was streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And I go, what? Yeah. How the fuck? Did, yeah, he did that shit. And I, I need to figure that out. <laughs> he, he gave me the fucking idea. <laughs> you stupid fuck. But yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that that's where I first got the, got the light bulb. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't know what format he was using for that, or what service. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you got. Uh, so you got. What is it? Gumroad got dot com slash presoteric, or yep, that's it. nice and easy. Okay, and then uh, what's the other one? Patreon dot com slash dot com slash presoteric. Easy enough, and then your easy. Facebook. Where these live feeds are coming out, how people get on there? Is that your personal or is that a presoteric? Uh, it's, it's an official page on Facebook. So if you just type in presoteric into the search bar, you'll find it. Or if you want to use a URL, um, it's facebook.com slash presotericism. Nice and easy. All right. Well, Darren and Kinsey, thanks for, thank you for coming on the show. I think we... we We've got to get out of here. <laughs> it's going to blow away, dude. <laughs> it's getting really fucking crazy up here. I don't know if you can hear all that on the microwave or on the microphone. But, or on the microwave. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's getting kind of nuts up here. And uh, my hair is in my face. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, check out Presoteric on all of their formats. I've been loving the... The daily live streams came out like every day except for today because, you know, they had to prepare for Wittershins, which we don't even prepare for. But, yeah, (laughs) we don't even know what day it is half the time. It's like, oh, we're going to talk about normalization of magic. Okay, cool. We can rant on that. And we did. Look at that. Two hours almost passed. And uh, Presoteric and Wittershins ranted on the subject matter with no script. Yes. We're kicking ass. Thank you all for coming on. Appreciate you having us as always. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Okay. And you, of course, can find uh, me on uh, YouTube at FreakPhil1309. That's F-R-E-A-K-P-H-I-L and the number's 1309. More serious uh, practitioners... 
those willing to pay for my services can find me at gumroad.com slash witch school, which is, of course, W-I-T-C-H-S-K-E-W-L, where it's, uh, it's April 9th today. Uh, April 29th, I will be opening up my year-in-a-day class on gumroad.com slash witch school. <laughs> Marta is somebody. <laughs> uh, I will be opening up my year-in-a-day course in all things witchcraft. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. There's a video explaining um, that course. Um, but uh, you can get there uh, April 29th, or you can contact me at witchschool at gmail.com. That's W-I-T-C-H-S-K-E-W-L to secure your spot in the course. And those who want to take their chances going to sign up April 29th. Thank you all for joining us in the chat room. We're going to play us a couple things and get the hell off of the uh, top of the house before it blows away. Thank you for joining us at Wittershins.
Well, you tried it just for once, found it all right for kicks. But now you find out that it's a habit that sticks and you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Sneaking in the back door with dirty magazines. So your mother wants to know what all the stains on your jeans. And you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. But you still keep a beat and you meet to pulp and you're an orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. You're a kicker sonova, you're a no chose epita. Live on a fucking yourself to death. Orgasm addict. You're an orgasm addict. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Assistants and bell hops, you found them all here and there. Children of God and the joy strings, international women with nobody has. Fast died young like James Dean on the dark side. 